All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name's Brian Harley. I'm the executive director of CMAC. And I'm joined with the Johnny Pacina, our community media manager, on the call as well. Johnny will be uh, looking in the chat, uh, to see if there's any questions. Folks are, are typing in that way, and he'll be uh, letting people into the room as well as we uh, go through this presentation. Uh, but welcome. Glad you joined us tonight. Uh, let me see if I can advance to the next slide here. Oops, there we go. Hit one too many. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about tonight is the big tell. Uh, we're going to cover a little bit about uh, who is CMAC and who is the Central Valley Community Foundation, in case you don't already know. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about the big tell, uh, important dates that will be coming up, uh, some helpful tips for your application if you're thinking about applying for the Big Tell this year. And uh, then our contact information if you want to reach out after this call. If you have further questions, uh, we're happy to, to answer. Um, and then we'll also just take your questions right here on the call um, after I've, I've presented this information. So uh, if you've got questions, uh, hang tight. Uh, you can put them in the chat if you want. We can get to them at the end, or uh, at the end, you could just kind of unmute yourself and, and ask your question that way, however you're you're comfortable. Uh, but I do ask that during the presentation, you do keep your, your mic muted. So let's get going. Uh, what is CMAC? Who's CMAC? So CMAC is the Community Media Access Collaborative. We are a nonprofit organization based in Fresno, and uh, we're all about helping people tell their story. So we believe everybody in the Central Valley it has a story to tell, and we want to help them get to that point where they feel comfortable sharing it themselves. So we're, we're all about media education, media training, providing access to media resources, uh, and empowering people to have that confidence and ability to, to share you know, their unique story with the world. Um, and what's so awesome about the Big Tell is it provides funding uh, for people to tell those stories, uh, $5,000 grants. And uh, we have the ability to give out these $5,000 grants thanks to the Central Valley Community Foundation and the James B. McClatchy Foundation. They are our primary funders for the Big Tell program. Um, and what is the Big Tell? So the Big Tell is a regional filmmaking program. And as I mentioned, we're offering grants for the production of a five minute short documentary that features undiscovered stories from the Central Valley. And in this case, we are defining the Central Valley as these uh, six counties. So Merced, Mariposa, Madera, Fresno, Kings, and Tulare. So five minute short documentaries uh, about stories that you might not have heard before um, uh, about amazing people, places, or, or things or activities that make the Central Valley unique. Uh, this is a, a frame grab from one of the documentaries that we funded in 2020 from Shira Gordon called On the Edge, a story about a group of uh, female rock climbers uh, and, and what inspires them to, to do what is kind of a, a dangerous and thrilling sport. <laughs> um, so again, we're looking for stories that you probably have not, you know, read an article about in the newspaper, or you've not seen on the local news, but, but things, again, that make our region so unique and special. And every single year uh, since 2017, uh, we've had, we've held the Big Tell. Big Tell was, was started in 2017 by the Central Valley Community Foundation. Um, and each year we attract around 75 applications from across those six counties. Uh, the 10 winners that we select out of uh, all of those applications will have three months to create their short films. Um, in addition to the $5,000 grant, they will receive one-on-one -on -one mentorship from Emmy-nominated documentarian Sasha Rice and a one-year membership to CMAC. Um, the completed films will premiere together at what we call the Big Tell Showcase. And this year, oh, actually, I, I just typed in that date and I typed 2020 by accident. <laughs> it's actually 
November of 2022, of course. Uh, the details of when that screening or, or where that screening will take place and the exact date are still in the works. Um, in previous years, we've held a large public screenings at the Warner's Theater, at the Tower Theater. And over the past two years, uh, due to COVID, we were unable to have in-person screenings. So we partnered with uh, local broadcast media. Uh, Valley BBS one year and last year KC24. So the showcase uh, was strictly over broadcast television. This year we're still determining what those details will be, but suffice to say there will be a public screening of, of the 10 winning films uh, in late November of 22. So what are those important dates to keep in mind if you are interested in applying for the Big Tell? So uh, July 12th is uh, the due date for applications. So you still have several more weeks here to work on your application and get that submitted. Uh, after that, July 27th, uh, we will reach out to the winning filmmakers and let them know. Uh, then on August 1st, we will have a meet and greet at CMAC. Uh, all 10 of the winning filmmakers will be there, as well as your mentor, uh, Sasha Rice. Uh, and then from that meet and greet, that's pretty much the starting line. Uh, that's when you get rolling on your film. So um, after that, we're gonna have four check-ins with the filmmakers. Uh, you'll, you'll check in with, with your mentor, Sasha Rice. Um, that very first check-in is gonna be on September 12th or, or thereabouts. You know, about a, we have like a week window in which these check-ins take place. But basically a month and a week after you start working on your film, we want to see that uh, you've started shooting. So we wanna see an assembly cut at that, at, at that first check-in point. Um, it doesn't have to be you know, a fully edited piece, obviously at that point. Again, it could just be clips of here. I, here's a clip from an interview I shot. Here's some clips of B-roll that I shot. Just kind of showing us that you, you're progressing in, in terms of the, the production of the film. Uh, after that, we'll meet again about another month and we'll want to see some kind of rough cut. Uh, several weeks after that, we'll want to see like a finer cut. And then again, on November 7th is going to be the, the drop dead deadline. We've got to have your film by November 7th. Uh, and again, that's, that's a window of time from beginning to end of three months that you have to, to produce the film. And uh, then, as I just mentioned, in late November, we'll have a showcase and screening of the films. Uh, some tips for submitting your application. So uh, some do's and don'ts, actually. We'll start with the do's. So uh, can you submit more than one idea? Yes, you can. But you do need to submit a separate application for each idea. So we do not want to see your application uh, and, and you're, you're, you know, you're talking about you know, three different ideas that you have in the same application. We do not want you to do that. <laughs> we want you to submit a separate application for each concept that you have. Uh, and if you just have one concept, that's fine. That's okay, submit one application. Uh, you do need to fill out all of the fields in the application. We've helped you out with this by making those like required fields. So if you try to submit your application without completely filling it out, it will remind you, hey, you didn't fill this out. Um, uh, you do need to have your film concept really thought out by the time you submit your application. Um, you'll see that there's questions in there about, uh, you know, a log line, a synopsis, uh, documents that you could submit to us kind of showing the timeline of your production, um, that you've thought about who you're gonna be interviewing for your film, <clears throat> what the general story is. So we do not want you to submit your application without like a fully thought out concept. You really need to do all that work ahead of time if you're gonna be successful and be one of the, the 10 winning concepts that we pick. Uh, do remember that this is a documentary film contest. <clears throat> Sometimes we will get applications for works of fiction, and that is not what we are looking for. These need to be documentary films, nonfiction films presenting factual information. 
Uh, we do want you to share how your, your story is relevant to the community. Uh, sometimes we'll get applications that are like very uh, autobiographical in nature. Someone wants to tell a story about themselves. And, and while that's okay, uh, potentially, uh, you, we do need to see how your story is relevant to the whole community and kind of relevant to the theme of the big tell. You know, that idea of exploring you know, amazing people, places, and things that make the region unique. So please do be thorough in, in how you explain why your concept uh, is relevant. Uh, oops, I hit, there we go. Hit one too many. So the don'ts, uh, do not <laughs> propose a film idea that is similar to ones that we've done in the past. So if, if you go to thebigtell.org, uh, on the web page, uh, you can see all of the previous films that have won the grant. So like I mentioned, we've been doing this since 2017. So five years and there's 10 winners each year. So that's 50 films that we've funded over the last five years. Please do take a look at those previous films. You don't necessarily have to watch all of them, but note uh, what the films were about because we are not likely to fund a film that is similar to one that we funded in the past. So uh, scroll through that. If you maybe have an idea already and you see, oh, oh, that film sounds like it might be similar to my idea. I would suggest you watch it <laughs> and make sure that your idea has a, a unique spin on that concept, or you might wanna consider changing your, your concept at that point. Uh, do not wait until the last minute to submit your application. It is a rather lengthy application. Uh, and again, we do want you to be thorough and detailed in your application. So probably not a good idea to start on it uh, the day before it's due. Uh, please give yourself time to think about it. In fact, I would, you know, the application itself is a Google form. So I would suggest you take a look at it and perhaps even uh, type those questions out uh, in a separate document so that you have time to kind of play with it and go over your responses and then perhaps copy and paste your responses back into the form when it's time to submit. Um, but again, don't, don't wait till the last minute. Give yourself plenty of time to look through the application and consider your responses. Uh, do not worry if you need access to equipment or resources. Uh, the Big Tell is a contest that is open to um, not just folks who consider themselves to be professional filmmakers, but we also welcome students, amateur filmmakers, or aspiring filmmakers to apply. Um, I'm going to talk a mo in a moment about things that, that our judging panel considers when we're judging the applications. And one of those is the experience level of, of the filmmaker. And we try to, to pick 10 people who have a variety of experiences. So we do want to at least have like one student filmmaker in there. We do wanna have several amateur filmmakers in the cohort as well. So uh, if you're thinking, gosh, I don't have any experience or I'm very new to this, uh, maybe I'm not going to apply. Uh, we don't want that to discourage you. Again, that's why we have the mentorship uh, from Sasha, and that's why uh, you also have mentorship from CMAC staff as well. Um, so again, you, you have our, our resources. If you don't know much about CMAC, we do provide equipment for checkout. So if, like you don't have your own camera or you need things like lights and microphones or um, anything else, you know, we have all of that equipment and again, a CMAC membership is going to be something that comes along with winning the $5,000 grant. Uh, the last don't is don't hesitate to ask questions. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. And again, I'm gonna have my contact information up at the, uh, the end of the presentation as well. Um, so there's, and I mentioned this earlier, but there's, there's plenty of great things that are happening in the Central Valley. But again, we're looking for the stories that haven't been told yet. 
So if your concept has already received you know, extensive news coverage, then it's probably not undiscovered and it's unlikely to be chosen for the big tell. Uh, however, if your concept, uh, if you can somehow find a new angle to the story, then it, it might be more viable. It might be something that we would consider. So again, if you know if you've seen a something in the Fresno Bee, something on ABC 30, uh, local news uh, about your concept, doesn't mean you can completely rule it out, but you need to find like that unique spin on it. Um, also, again, like I mentioned, take a look at the previous films because we're not likely to fund something that we funded in previous years. Uh, so the judging criteria, what are we gonna look at when we consider your application? So number one, we're gonna look at your story. Uh, is this story truly original in terms of its theme, its idea, or its storytelling technique? Uh, does the film have a clear structure, plot, story arc? Uh, is it engaging? Is it, is it relevant to the community and relevant to that theme that I mentioned previously of uh, unique people, places, and things in the Central Valley? Oops, uh, diversity. So that's another thing that we're gonna consider when we look at all of these applications. Um, does this application contribute to our goal of diversity amongst the filmmakers, among stories and geographical focus? Um, so as I mentioned, the, the six counties in, uh, that we're considering to be the Central Valley, Merced, Mariposa, Madera, Fresno, Kings, and Tulare, uh, of those six counties, uh, we will choose a story that focuses at least on uh, one of those counties. So, so six of the 10 winning concepts will feature stories about at least one of those counties. So, um, you know, my pro tip to you folks out there, historically, we've not received a lot of applications for say Mariposa, Merced counties. So think about stories in those regions and that might kind of give you a leg up. Um, we tend to receive many more applications for stories in like Fresno County, for example. Um, so think about some of those, those other counties and, and the stories that you might be able to tell from those regions uh, because at least one winner will come from each of those counties. But again, we'll also look at um, things like, you know, we want a, a diversity of uh, filmmaker experience, as I mentioned before. So not all 10 winners are gonna be professionals. We'll have a mix of, of professional, uh, amateur and aspiring filmmakers. Uh, and we're also gonna try to have a diversity of, uh, uh, of, of gender identity as well. So we don't, we're not gonna pick 10 male filmmakers. We're gonna want a good mix of uh, different, different folks and, and backgrounds and identities. Uh, we'll also kind of consider these other things or things that are kind of subjective of, you know, is the story compelling? Is it interesting? You know, what makes it unique? Um, the judging panel will think about, is this a film that we want to see? Um, and we'll also consider how the film kind of fits in to the nine other films that we're considering um, because they're all going to pre premiere together at the showcase. Um, some more application tips. So uh, presentation matters, uh, finding that unique and compelling angle for your story uh, that again has relevance for what we're considering the Central Valley region to be. Um, you know, you really got to sell it to us. This application is like a pitch. You're pitching us on your idea uh, and you know your idea, you know the story. So you really need to sell it to us in your application. Uh, for example, which of these two sentences sounds more compelling? Uh, a day in the life of a Central Valley Railroad worker or tall trees, old machines, and the voice of experience in the shadow of Yosemite National Park, an aging crew member of a historic steam railroad ponders the future of his trade 
as the business mounts a comeback in the post-pandemic world. So you can see right away, one has a lot more detail, one evokes kind of a lot more emotion and imagery uh, than the other. So please consider your writing <laughs> in, in terms of the application and um, you know, spend some time selling us on, on your idea. And in fact, this uh, Tall Trees, Old Machines, that, that log line was actually the log line for one of the films that we funded in 2020 called The Steam that focused on uh, this, a story about the old Sugar Pine Railroad in the, up in Yosemite. So uh, you can watch that film at thebigtel.org. Uh, here's a quick way to get like an automatic no from us. <laughs> um, if your concept feels like a marketing piece for a company or an organization or a political campaign or a political candidate, <clears throat> that's pretty much going to be an automatic no. Those are not the things that we're looking for. And sometimes we have received applications like that and we can spot the propaganda from a mile away. <laughs> so uh, that doesn't mean that we haven't funded stories about local businesses or about local organizations and their work. We definitely have. Um, and again, you can go to the bigtel.org and, and see what those films are. Um, but again, it's, it's kind of how you sell the concept in your application. And if it feels like you're just trying to do a marketing piece, that's not something that we're interested in. Um, and again, I'll admit, I think this is like the third time I've mentioned it, but a hard no is going to be any film concept that we've already done in a previous year. That's going to be a quick way for us to uh, not consider your application. For example, we every single year receive applications about murals, especially in Fresno County. Uh, we've done that. We've been there. Uh, unless you've got a really unique spin on it, come up with another concept. Uh, another tip would be, is your idea realistic? So you might have like a really fantastic, amazing idea, but can you pull it off? And is this idea the right size for a five minute film? Uh, because that is a hard requirement. Um, you cannot turn in your finished film and have it be six, seven, eight minutes long. Five minutes is the hard cutoff. So it's gotta be an idea that you can fit into that five minute time span. Uh, and that is something that our filmmakers have struggled with every year and something that, you know, your mentor Sasha will really be helpful with is, is helping you uh, squeeze that idea into that five minute time frame. But, but again, as you're thinking about applying, just if you have a really amazing idea that you know is not going to fit into five minutes, maybe you need to rethink it. Uh, think about the interviews that you need to get. Um, if your whole concept hinges on, you know, I need to interview Joe Biden, <laughs> you know, the president of the United States, uh, we're probably not going to fund your idea because the likelihood of you getting that interview is not very high. Um, unless you can kind of show us some proof or that, you know, you've got a connection and you can get this interview, um, you know, we're, we're going to consider what is, what is the likelihood uh, of that actually happening. So again, it all comes back to you being detailed in terms of your pre-production and, and the details that you're sharing in your application. But again, like if you're application hinges on an interview that you're not sure you can get, maybe you should consider another concept. Um, and you also have to consider uh, your own experience as a filmmaker um, or your team. You know, if, if you aren't gonna be the filmmaker in your group, if you're working with someone else who's gonna be the primary filmmaker, you need to think about their experience and their availability and just your whole timeline of being able to complete the film in the three months. Um, all of these are very, very important uh, considerations to think about before applying. Um, it's relative. <laughs> uh, 
the ultimate consideration for us is going to be how will the 10 films play together at the showcase and you know that's gonna mean you know having a mix of uh different genres of films different topics as i mentioned before diversity and representation from the six, six counties that's all going to come into play um and there's not much you can do about that ahead of time and submitting your idea because you're not sure when you submit your idea if there's going to be 10 other people who submit that same idea so at, at some you know level that's out of your hands but just want to make sure that all of you understand that you know from our perspective we will have to make some hard choices and there might be folks you know three applications that talk about the same idea and we ultimately will have to just be able to choose one of them and it, it's tough, but with so many applications and only 10 winners, we inevitably have to, you know, not choose some folks. But we always, you know, encourage you to apply uh, for subsequent years. And there's our contact information. Um, again, my email and Johnny's email. Um, now it's time for questions from you and I can see that we already have uh, quite a, a lot going on in the chat. I'll go ahead and close my presentation here and stop sharing my screen. Um, and we'll take your questions. So Johnny, do you have any uh, queued up? Ready to yes, go? Yes, uh, most definitely. Chat? Yeah, I know uh, for uh, at least Tammy, I know one of the questions was answered during your presentation, but before I jump into that, I just wanted to make sure, um, were there any uh, specific questions? For example, uh, I think we had, uh, Dean, you had a number of questions. Uh, I guess I'll offer the floor to you. Do you wanna ask any one of those in particular that jump out to you that you really want to know, or we'll just kind of go down the line with all of your questions? Do you have a preference? Yes, thank you. I, uh, I wrote the questions that would require simple one, you know, short answers. And I've uh, circled the ones I wanted to talk to you about. Um, <clears throat> I came out of TV news uh, way, way back when in college and a B-roll in the, in the context of a newscast was different than what you guys are describing here. I'm curious to know uh, what, what would, is this uh, two minutes of behind the scenes footage going to be useful. If I'm doing a, a, a two minute setup for the five minute thing later, uh, what specifically is this B-roll about? Okay, uh, you're referring to probably some, uh, uh, one of the frequently asked questions on the website, right? Yes. Yeah. So the idea behind that is, <clears throat> Um, the winning filmmakers will not only be required to obviously make their five minute film, but uh, also help us promote the showcase. Mm -hmm. So uh, that means um, either coming, uh, it, it, we haven't worked out all the details yet. And, and if we're going to have you know, who our broadcast partner is going to be or uh, but there, there will be an interview that we want to conduct with each of the filmmakers right. um, to have them talk about their experiences making the film, what inspired them to tell mm -hmm. the story. And we want to have some material to use as kind of B-roll for that interview. So gotcha. Gotcha. That, could, that could be as simple as, you know, mm -hmm. you taking a few behind the scenes photos right. uh, of of, you know, when you go do a setup, you know, when you're filming mm -hmm. your documentary, just some, again, something for us to, to use um, during that short interview. It doesn't have to be very substantial. Uh, again, it could just be photographs, for example. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Can I have a follow-up question here? Sure. Uh, you guys asked, you want to know the name of the, of the film. I'm a book writer and so on. I was always taught that that's the last thing you do is the title. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming if we give you a title as part of this application, we, that's changeable. <clears throat> yes, it is definitely changeable. Um, and that has happened in the past. You know, mm -hmm. um, we'll receive an application with a, a certain title 
and then by by the end of the process, uh, you know that that title has shifted or changed slightly. Um, so that's totally okay. Uh, there will be a point in time in, in which you know during the editing process, we will definitely want to lock that in because again, there will be some promotion that we want to do, getting the word out about the showcase. Um, and when we do that promotion, we want to have all the names of the films locked in. Um, but but can that change? You know, from the point of you submitting the application to uh, the finished film. I mean, yes. Sure, that, I got gotcha. you. Can change. Good. Yeah. All right. I had a technical question about the uh, editing software you guys use down there. Sure. I've been to CMac and I've seen all the iMacs lined up. I have an iMac that I do my video on, and it'd be nice to be on the same page. Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, the winning filmmakers can use whatever tools that they have at their disposal um, in terms of equipment and computers and software. You know, we, we don't dictate that the winners use any, any specific equipment or software. Uh, what we have at CMAC though, if you need to use our resources, uh, we do have Apple computers. So we have a computer lab with uh, iMacs. Uh, we also have laptops, uh, MacBook laptops that can be checked out and used at home. Mm -hmm. And those are loaded up with Final Cut Pro, uh, the entire Adobe Creative Suite. So that includes like Adobe Premiere and After Effects Photoshop and also uh, DaVinci Resolve. So we have several, and actually also iMovie, which is like yeah. very basic editing software. So we have a variety of different software packages available on our, our computers. Good, thank you. I'll let somebody else have the floor. <laughs> sure. Thanks for your questions, Dean. Hi, Tammy, I saw you wave there. <laughs> I just have two questions. Um, I wrote them in the chat too. So, and sorry about my rooster in the background. He thinks he's a dog. <laughs> um, so can a, can a story take place in two counties? How do you address that? Yes, uh, it definitely can take place in two counties and we've had that happen. Um, and, um, you know, I would just say notate that somewhere in your application because I believe one of the questions in the application is you know what county does your story take place in uh, and if yours takes place in multiple again you know, just find a spot within the application to note that and you know if, if it comes up in your like synopsis or other materials that you submit we'll just take note of that and the judges will definitely consider that when we're deliberating and making sure that our choices are representative of the six counties. Does it, does it decrease your chances? Like would, would it be um, better for you to try to make it one county? No, I don't think it hurts your chances necessarily. I mean, because the biggest thing we're gonna look at is the story. And if that story is compelling, it's unique, uh, that's what's really gonna matter. Okay, cool. Um, that yeah. actually leads into my second question. So when uh, I have been waiting for the big tell for six months, because <laughs> I had a story concept. And when it came out, I literally sat in front of the computer, I watched a bunch of the past um, winners. And I actually submitted that that day or that night, because it took me about eight hours. But um, I think that the majority, I think it's about an hour's worth of stuff. So um, if your concept looks like it's way more than five minutes, is it best that you work on cutting it down before you submit? Uh, yes, uh, I, I would definitely suggest cutting it down because yeah, when we, you know, all we're gonna have to go off of is what you include in your application. And if your application looks like it's trying to tell a story that's not gonna fit into a five minute time frame, then it's not likely to be chosen. Um, so we really do need you to show us um, you know, that your concept can fit in that time frame. So I noticed on the Google form, I can 
edit it. The only thing I can't do is delete my storyboard that I submitted as a file attachment. How, how can I fix that? Um, we, we can connect with you afterwards and try to look at that, but okay. um, I'm not exactly sure. You know, so you've already gone to the app. You haven't submitted the application, but I you submitted just it, upload. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. But even uh, after you submit it, I noticed it allows you to edit stuff. So I've been it. changing it along the way. And then I realized, you know, I need to change the storyboard, but it won't let me take the storyboard off and fix it and then resubmit it. Got it. So yeah, what we can do is we can connect with you afterwards and um, <clears throat> we can uh, basically have you resubmit the application with the correct documents, you know, as long as you resubmit it before the deadline and then that's totally fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's see. Other questions that I'm seeing in the chat are, um, where can we see California State of Mind? So for those of you who don't know, that is the uh, documentary in which uh, Sasha Rice was nominated for an Emmy. Um, it's called California State of Mind, The Legacy of Pat Brown. I'm not sure where that is available, um, but if you do some Googling, um, maybe it's streaming somewhere, or maybe you purchase a copy of it. I'm, I'm not quite sure. And uh, follow up to that question here. It looks like we have uh, another one um, about virtual check-ins with Sasha. Are those on Zoom? Uh, yes. So um, when we do, when we uh, notify all the winners uh, that they've been chosen, uh, we will have a meet and greet uh, that will be in person here at CMAC, and Sasha will be here in person at CMAC to meet all of you. Um, but after that, once you start working on your film, uh, Sasha is based in Los Angeles, so those check-ins will be over video conferencing, whether it's Zoom or another platform or, you know, phone call. But uh, yeah, you guys will connect virtually uh, after that, and then Sasha will be back uh, when we do the uh, showcase uh, later in November. But yeah, all of your communication with Sasha during the filmmaking process will be uh, remote. And you, if you do need any in-person assistance, uh, that's when Johnny and myself and the other staff members at CMAC uh, can come in handy. <clears throat> you know, if you want to come in and meet with us or show us your cut or, or ask questions or you're having technical problems, um, Johnny and I can can answer all those uh, types of questions, uh, especially if you need in-person assistance. Um, another question here is, will you provide uh, favorite examples of logline synopsis and story context? Uh, so I guess any of the like past applications, do we uh, provide any of those examples? So we don't, that's a good question, but um, you'll notice in this, uh, in my slide deck, there was the log line from the STEAM, which was winning film in 2020. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, we don't have examples of winning applications available. Um, I would suggest that you watch some of the films. Um, and then, uh, we have another question. May we see and print out the application? Um, yeah, you're, you're more than welcome to print it out for sure. And I do have, I'm going to drop it in the chat right now. Pardon the length of it. It's the Google form. So it'll be kind of a longer URL, but that is a direct link to the application. So if you want to yeah, so save that. Yeah, when you go to the bigtel.org or you click that link that Johnny just put in, that'll take you to the application. And there should be an option for you to print that out. We do need you to submit it electronically. Uh, so you, there's no option for you to submit a you know, printed out physical copy of the application. It does need to be submitted uh, digitally through that link. But yeah, if you're just working on your application in the meantime and you wanna print it out or you know, 
uh, you know, do some uh, chicken scratch, <laughs> that's totally fine. But just make sure you give yourself enough time to, to type it all up uh, or copy and paste into the application form itself before the deadline. I have a couple of live questions. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I'm kind of a night owl, I am. <laughs> I'm wondering what the hours are on the editing suites. Uh, yeah, so right now, CMAX uh, facilities are, and in fact, just um, as of this week, our hours have actually changed, but we're open uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from noon to 9 p.m., uh, Fridays, noon to 6 p.m., and then Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And if you didn't catch all that, if you just go to our website, our hours are right up on there. Okay. Um, uh, but we also have uh, laptops that you can check out with uh, the editing software on them. So that way, if uh, you want to work uh, at 2 a.m. <laughs> from the comfort of your home, you'll be able to do that. Uh, I have a, a concept that would go, I've got a, a, a very wide thing that, that covers a couple of decades. There's a lot of people involved. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm picturing it's kind of a round table uh, uh, with maybe half dozen of the principals sharing funny stories and so on. I don't know what I'll get, but I know that that's good stuff to intercut with. So I'm wondering about uh, studio you know, availability, lights, and so on. Yeah, so we do have a studio facility available at CMAC. Um, I would say a majority of um, the films that we've seen come out of the Big Tell are shot on location. But uh, if your particular idea or concept uh, requires a, a studio recording facility, uh, our studio is uh, available. It's a uh, thousand square foot studio. Right. And if, if you go to our website, there's like pictures of it and stuff. So again, that'll all be uh, resources that you can utilize uh, to make your film. Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's see, we've got some other questions in the chat here. Um, why apply more than once? Um, well, if you've got uh, several concepts uh, that you that you think might be good and that might be a reason to apply more than once um, but no it isn't a drawing uh, we we definitely have criteria that we use um, for judging each of the uh, applications but um, yeah you might apply more than once just if you have you know, several ideas um let's see other questions I think we addressed uh, the others from Tim. Have we addressed those, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I think that covers all the questions that were in the chat. But uh, are there any other questions that have come up that folks got, have about uh, the application? Got Tammy. Yeah, Ray Tammy. Ran. Sorry, I was trying to type it real fast, but um, sure. Is it possible to like meet with a CMAC staff member and get any advice, like one, like? showing them your idea, your concept, and get any guidance? Or is it completely on your own? Um, I'm talking so, like you know, like, like with my yeah. situation of being too long, you know, if someone says, hey, you need to cut that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if the, if, if, the questions are, you know, what do you think of my idea? <laughs> is this idea going to win? <laughs> you know, yeah, we, we can't really provide no. advice in terms of that. No, I but yeah, if, if, they're, <laughs> if they're technical questions, um, you know, we could definitely address that and, and uh, help you out. Um, yeah, in fact, I have uh, fielded several emails from folks already saying, here's my idea. What do you think? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I can't comment on your idea. You need to put all of this in your application. Uh, all I can say is, you know, watch watch the existing films <laughs> from the past years and make sure yours is not too similar to any of the others. But so yeah, if, 
we can't specifically like help address mm, story uh, questions, but we can definitely uh, help you out if you're just trying to like figure out how you can pare down your concept to fit into a five minute time frame. And how do you do that? Do you, do you send an email and ask? Yeah. Who do you send it yeah, to? So if you go to our website, there's a consultation form that you can fill out to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with our community media staff. Uh, most likely it'll be like Alex probably, or maybe even Johnny. But yeah, there's a consultation form. Um, we can actually, I could put the link in the chat right here. It's just cmac.tv slash consult. And then that should take you right to the form and, and we can schedule a time to, uh, to chat. Can you pick the person or does it? Because I wouldn't want to schedule with Alex if he's going to apply again this year. Um, uh, who, so, sorry, Brian, if I may. Uh, what was the so, question? Yeah. So uh, actually, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I, I, don't, I don't believe, I think we're kind of automatically uh, disqualified anyone from CMAX staff. Oh, CMAX staff. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so no, uh, so CMAX no staff there. are not eligible <laughs> to... Uh, to receive the grant. <laughs> so, so no worries there. Uh, thank you. We appreciate your concern there. Um, but yeah, yeah dear Alex would be more than happy to meet with you to go over the uh, technicalities and all that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, judging panel who's on it or how it's comprised? Yeah. So that will consist of myself um, and a couple other staff members from CMAC. Uh, it will also consist of a representative or, or possibly multiple representatives from the James B. McClatchy Foundation, who's one of the funders, as well as the Central Valley Community Foundation, which is one of the funders. So it's usually a panel of about five people. Um, and we will uh, review mm, pretty much all of the applications and then break it down into like a top 20 and then eventually break that down into a top 10. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to do because there, there's always really great ideas that we just can't quite fit into the 10 selections. But um, I really do enjoy reading all the applications because there's some really, like I said, really excellent ideas. Um, and if I could fund all of them, I would, but <laughs> we got to choose 10. Um, and, and if folks, you know, are really, you know, if you don't win the grant, but, uh, you know, you're really committed to your idea and you want to see it through, you, know, you can definitely still utilize CMAX resources with uh, a membership. Um, you know, memberships are relatively inexpensive. They start at $25 a year for students, $50 a year for individuals. Uh, and again, you can have access to all the resources I mentioned previously, cameras, lights, equipment, facilities. Um, you just wouldn't get the five thousand dollar grant, <laughs> but but again, that's that's an option if you don't want to wait until next year's Big Tell to apply again. You know, if you're not chosen this year, you, know, you can always utilize CMAX resources in the meantime. So examples of prior work uh, that is that could be anything. How long do you want that? Is that and is it part of the app? I guess it would be. Yeah, so these um, specifically for, I, I believe the filmmaker is, is what we ask for examples of previous work. So it's just to show us, um, you know, what, what other, show, show us about your filmmaking experience. Um, so it might be links to previous documentaries that you've produced or, you know, other, other types of videos. Um, and, and if you're not going to be the primary filmmaker or you're working with someone who's going to primarily be doing the shooting or the editing, it could be examples of their work in, instead. Um, so I would just say try to be specific in the application of uh, whose work this is and, um, and the, you know, what their, I guess, roles and responsibilities were. Um, if you're like providing us a link to a YouTube video, for example. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to go down the line here with another question. Uh, type of film aspect and whether 
we can include relevant historical photos or footage. Um, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but yeah, any sort of, uh, if your story pertains to some, has some historical context that is needed, if you have ability to access historical photos or footage, um, we're happy to provide, especially with your CMAC mem membership on uh, how to properly implement that into your documentary um, quality of photos. And if you need to do any sort of graphical enhancements or adjustments, uh, we're happy to provide that info and yeah, definitely. Great. Yeah. Yeah, there's, um, there's been a number of films that we've funded over the years that have touched on historical concepts and yeah, the use of photos and archival footage and, and all of that is definitely encouraged. And then we have another one from Tammy. I'll, I'll read it out for you here. Um, uh, so you're just asking generally if we can help you or assist you and provide you some guidance on um, where you can submit your idea elsewhere for other film competitions. Um, one thing that comes to mind is, um, correct me if I'm wrong on the title here, Brian, a film freeway. Is that the one where you can find uh, like various film contests out there to submit an idea to? Um, if the if the applicant happens to not get selected for Big Tell, perhaps applying that idea to some other film festivals out there. Uh, so, well, Film Freeway is definitely a source for film festivals, but the difference would be that usually you have will have completed your film by then. Uh, so you have a complete film and you're submitting it to a festival. Uh, as as far as other contests out there that are similar to the Big Tell, where you're submitting a concept uh, in hopes of getting funding to produce that film. Um, I, there are resources out there and, and we can connect with you uh, off the call uh, on what some of those are. One that comes to mind um, is the California Humanities uh, or, or Cal Humanities. Um, they are a statewide offshoot of the National Endowment for the Humanities, and they have a specific grant called the California Documentary Project. Um, and so there's, there's grants that you can apply for if like you're in the research phase of your film. There's a grants you can apply for if you're in the production stage of your film. Um, so that, that is one resource that I know off the top of my head for specifically like funding concepts. Um, so you can, you can check that out, but, but we can also, you know, provide other resources. Uh, but that, again, just one that comes off the top of my head. What was the name of that again, Brian? Uh, the organization is called California Humanities. Okay. And the grant, the grant is called the California Documentary Project. I believe and their website's cal, calhum.org, C-A-L. H-U-M. <clears throat> Do we need to have any type of insurance in place to cover equipment or for any other reason? Um, so we, we don't require you to have any kind of insurance, um, but that's a personal decision that you might want to make if uh, you are, uh, you know, cover, to cover your own production, depending on what you're doing. Um, but yeah, we don't have any any specific insurance requirements. Uh, and if you're using our, if you're checking out our equipment, um, yeah, we don't require any insurance coverage for folks to check out our equipment or use our facilities. And yeah, someone shared a link to the, the California Humanities in the chat. Do you have a teleprompter? We do have a teleprompter. We have teleprompters in our studio, but then we also have ones that can be checked out and used out on location. Mm. Great. All right, any other questions that come to mind? Um, if not, uh, you can always reach out to myself or Johnny after the effect, anytime between now and uh, the deadline on July 12th. But, um, it's almost six o'clock, but we do have a little bit of time here for additional questions, if there are any. I have one. Yeah. Um, on the website, it said that if we need to hook up with someone who can actually do some filming for us, 
that we are to contact you? Do you have a list of people who might be interested in working? Yeah, so from time, uh, from previous years, sometimes we'll have uh, filmmakers reach out to us and say, you know, I want to make my services available, but I don't have a particular idea. Um, and on the flip side, we'll sometimes have people or organizations reach out and say, I have a great idea, but I don't have a filmmaker. And so we try to connect those folks if we can. Um, we, we do have a list uh, that is provided by the Fresno Film Commission of just local uh, production people. Uh, people who identify as, you know, director or camera operator and things like that. So that is a list that we can provide um, right now, specifically for the Big Tell this year. I haven't had any filmmakers reach out, but that doesn't mean that you can't try to connect yeah. with uh, a local filmmaker from this list, you know, right. and, and see. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And that has happened where... Um, you know, and we would encourage you to try to identify your filmmaking partner before you apply. But um, it has happened one time that I can think of where um, we awarded a uh, concept where the filmmaker wasn't quite locked in yet. Uh, and you, you know, that's, you can use your $5,000 grant however you want. Uh, sure. and, and that actually isn't a question that has come up um, today, but, but it is a question that we get quite often is, are there any restrictions in what I do with the $5,000? And the answer is no, there's no restrictions. You can take that $5,000 and uh, go up to Chuck Chansey Resort and Casino and blow it on the slot machines if you want, <laughs> but you're still going to need to provide us with a, a five-minute film. Um, so, uh, and, and if for whatever reason a, a winning filmmaker doesn't deliver their film, we do have the right to request that funding back. So, uh, fortunately, that's never happened. But, but again, that five thousand dollars can be used for hiring someone to, uh, you know, be your camera operator, be your editor. That you know, folks have done that many, many times uh, over the years with their grant winnings. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and it is okay to hire like professionals who have worked on like big screen um, production as well. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. How do you, yeah. a, uh, I have a technical question uh, about uh, taking files I'm working on at home, bringing them down there and working on them, bring them back here. Uh, how you guys, uh, handling that and avoiding viruses and so on? Um, well, avoiding viruses, uh, I think we could probably follow up with you after the call and get into a little bit more detail okay. on that okay. question. But, um, you know, we do provide uh, and we would recommend when people use our editing uh, suites here or if they're checking a laptop that you have your own storage media, right. or like an external hard drive to store mm -hmm. your files on. And that way, if you're uh, bringing your files from home or in, into the edit suites here at CMAC, you know, you have everything organized on that external storage media. Um, and, you know, if that's something you don't have, well, that's something you could potentially use the grant money for is to buy an external hard drive. But we also have yeah. uh, some external hard drives that we loan out to folks uh, here. So that is, that is another option as well. Great. All right, folks. Well, it's six o'clock. Are there any other unanswered lingering questions? Yes. Uh, where's my next stimulus check? <laughs> I don't think I can answer that one. <laughs> but uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, if you uh, would like to obtain the recording of this call, feel free to reach out to us. We can supply you with that. Uh, and again, if you have any other questions, um, please let us know between now and, and July 12th. And we really look forward to seeing your applications. Thank you for being with us this evening. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thank you. Good Thank night. you, Johnny.